Welcome back to Upside Down Data. We need to talk about Polygon. So why do we need to talk about Polygon? Well, some interesting things have been happening that have some relevance that actually could provide a tailwind for Matic potentially. So one of the things that happened today was that Ethereum had a hard fork. It had an upgrade, the Dan Kuhn upgrade basically. And one of the big things that this is gonna do is it's gonna reduce fees on layer two protocols, layer two protocols on top of Ethereum. So essentially any product or any protocol that is related to this narrative might get a boost from this. And remember, we're in a bull market. So in some ways, the actual tangible impact of some of these things matters less than the narrative fit that could potentially drive things further. Oftentimes in bull markets, all the assets are really looking for is some narrative to get a bunch of money to fly into them for them to pump like crazy. So Matic, Polygon, of course, being one of the more prominent layer two projects on Ethereum could actually benefit from this quite nicely. And with Matic, it has been underwhelming so far this year relative to a lot of other products. For example, we're just currently up um, since the beginning of kind of the main altcoin rally, only 150%, which is a lot lower than a lot of other altcoins that have moved up quite a bit more. But given this tailwind, maybe it's actually time for Matic to put in some catch up and actually be able to put in some moves and reassert itself in the market, basically try to break above these highs back from February and get higher. One of the things you'll remember is that Matic actually really benefited very much from the merge when that happened with ETH. That was one of the things that happened here that led to this big rally. The merge happened and Matic did very well. So could it be the case that that will happen again? We have another hard fork. We have another upgrade to Ethereum, one that's specifically meant to benefit layer twos. Could that really be one of the things that could drive Matic up? further. We'll have to see, but certainly so far so good on his price action. I would not be surprised if some of this has been anticipation of Dan Kuhn, and we'll see if, like with the merge, it can continue on afterwards. So to get a better sense of its prospects, given this potential tailwind, let's look at what some of our models are seeing with Matic and where they think it might be heading. So with our models, we have a bunch of different ones. I'm going to start off with more short-term focus then move over into more longer-term focus. So this is our short-term UDPI, so it's a risk model. So high values mean high risk, low values mean low risk, and it cares about moves that play out over days to weeks. And you see it does a really good job of tracking these really high risk points as well as these really low risk good buying opportunities for Matic. So what we're seeing right now is that it's risen certainly from where it was back at the beginning of this year, back in January, but it's not at the really high levels. It's not at super hot levels, certainly not at levels we saw for example, in the past bull market or the last bull market, we're still well below that. And so if this really is going to be something that changes the game, at least short term for Matic, this narrative, it would not be surprising at all to get up to levels like we saw, for example, coming off of the merge right around in here, or even potentially higher, some of these actual bull market zones. And so given its current level, it's not as low as, you know, certainly been great to be buying in here, but it's certainly not overheated. And that's where I think in the short term, it could have more room to run if the market wants to allow that. Basically, if this upgrade or whatever narrative boost Mac's gonna get is not fully priced in, I think it could have further to go. And the other reason why I think that is if we look at our trend confidence indicator, TCI, that also gives us some indication that this rally so far continues to look healthy. So this model, as the name implies, cares about the current trend. And really what you wanna look for with this model is how is it moving relative to the way that price is moving? If you're in an uptrend and the TCI is also trending up, that's a good sign, suggests a healthy rally. If you're moving up and the TCI starts moving down, that's a bearish sign that might suggest that the rally is weakening and you might get a deeper correction, like for example, we saw over here. And then again, when you see the TCI start to really rally to the upside, oftentimes price will follow and that's what we've seen. But importantly, price is moving up, the TCI continues to move up. So that suggests a healthy rally that's so far so good. I'll get more concerned if we see the TCI start to really trend against price, but so far they're moving together. And that's one of the things in the short term that's making me think this could have more room to go. That we have more plausible upside potential in the short term. And we also have the TCI confirming that this trend so far looks healthy. There's not really a lot of sign for concern just yet. But that's all short term. And in some ways that matters less to someone who's more interested in the long term. You know, someone with Matic might be hoping to, you know, buy like in the last cycle, buy down here and ride it all the way up through here and not be worried about short-term volatility along the way. So there we can look at some of our longer-term models to see what they think. So this is our long-term 
upside potential, upside downside potential indicator. So this is a longer term version of the risk model. So it cares about moves that play out over months, multiple months. And we see that it also is below zero. And so that suggests again, that in the longer term, there's plenty of room for us to run if Matic wants to. And so that's where I think we're seeing some nice confluence here. In the short term, there's room to move, but even also in the longer term, the models are looking favorable. That There's quite a bit of plausible upside versus downside potential in that longer term perspective. So obviously not financial advice, you should play the market however you see best fit, but that's just what I'm seeing from these data points. And we can also see other longer term data that's also hopeful. So this is our forecast model for Matic. It's basically predicting the probability of upside six months in the future. And so you can see it does a really good job of capturing when you're in a bullish footing. So for example, in the bull market here, getting really bullish, getting really bearish is when it's the all-time high, then getting bullish again as we recovered. And it's now getting quite bullish again as we're going through, suggesting that in the medium to longer term, it makes more sense to be bullish than bearish from the model's estimation. And obviously where we're at right now, about 85% chance of upside in six months, not 100%, but it's a lot better than being down at, for example, 12% or all the way down at, for example, you know, 10% like we were back here. And the other model we can look at that gives us some nice longer term perspective is our momentum bias indicator or MBI. So this is a momentum indicator as the name suggests, and it has distinct types of behaviors at different points in the market cycle. So you'll see that in these kind of accumulation zones going into bull markets, you see this kind of oscillation around zero. So zero is the average amount of momentum the asset's seen, the standard deviation uh, units are above and below that. And so when you're kind of oscillating around zero here, that tends to be that buildup time. We're not really dominating to the upside, but not really dominating to the downside in terms of momentum. And then you see these big explosions into the bull market, we're spending a lot more time in the green than in the red. But then vice versa, as you go into the bear market, you do the opposite. You spend a lot more time in the red than in the green. And then you go back into that reaccumulation zone. Now what's interesting about Matic is it had kind of a temporary more bearish uh, point here where it had kind of really fallen off from these this rally that happened after the merge, kind of resetting, catching up to what a lot of the rest of the altcoin market was doing, which was really crashing during that time. But then notably, it never took out its low from back here in June. And now we're gone right back into bull market type behavior where we're spending a lot of time in the green, maybe have some dips down to the red, but then back into the green again. So as long as Matic continues to do that, to show that kind of bull market type of behavior, you're spending a lot more time in the green than the red, that's a good sign. And when you take that in conjunction with a bullish forecast model and with a long-term EDPI that sees a lot of room to the upside, and certainly no overheating yet in this bull market, it suggests to me that Matic could have a lot more room to run. Now, that said, it's up to you to decide if Matic is really gonna be the best performer versus other assets. Obviously, that is a call that you have to make for yourself. I'm obviously not giving any advice about that. This is all just about Matic itself, about its upside versus downside potential. But it would not surprise me personally if Matic starts playing some catch-up. It's really been pretty underwhelming so far. It's been disappointing, frankly, relative to a lot of other assets in its current price uh, action. But it's possible that it was really just looking for that next narrative to take it to be able to go and maybe you know retest prior all-time highs, maybe even break out to new all-time highs like some other assets have. You know, Matic was an asset that really ran quite late last cycle. And so, you know, there's there's some indication that with any given altcoin, there's no guarantee it's going to be one of the early runners in any given cycle. But I do think that if we're in a full bull market. It does seem like eventually Matic is going to have its time in the sun. And that could be now, based on this narrative, that could be later. But I do think at some point Matic is going to start chewing up some of this realistic upside potential that it has in a bull market. It's just too mainstream of a product too strong of a product in the sense of the narrative fits that it can have and a lot of the tech that the polygon team are building you would think that at some point then it's going to fit in with some narrative that's going to pump hard but of course you never know a lot of that's the randomness of when things run really just depends on what the market decides to value at a given point in time and so that's where getting too caught up in what is the actual fundamental tech in a bull market can sometimes lead you astray because it's not always the things that have the best fundamentals that run the hardest, the earliest. It can be other things. You know, look at meme coins. They went crazy and they are just basically air. It's just pure speculation. And so that's where in a bull market, things don't really follow what might seem logical or reasonable based on fundamental factors. But to kind of sum up here, I do think that there's a lot potentially going for Matic now. And maybe really even the case that it hasn't been performing as well could actually be the case that we could play some catch up where a lot of people who are looking to take that hot ball of money that they made on other assets or looking for the next thing, maybe they see this narrative fit and they decide to pile in. And especially if 
maybe some other L2s start really rallying, I would expect Polygon to follow along just because that's what tends to happen in bull markets. People are going to take those profits, move it into the sector they think is heating up to try to ride that up further. So we'll see if that plays out. That's obviously very speculative. We'll have to see. But certainly things are looking reasonable for Matic right now and certainly a lot better than they did, for example, back through over here. All right, if you like the content, or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X. I'll have updates for our models and more over there. And you can go and check out our website, partydigital.io, link in the description to see live data from our models and more.